And here is the most beautiful bladder you will ever see. Notice, like in many of the things we have been discussing, the mucosal cells are basically bluer because they have chiefly nuclei and cytoplasm and no connective tissue, which is why they look bluer than the underlying connective tissues. Notice it has kind of an undulating or wavy appearance, certainly not really papillary. And then notice the majority of the thickness of the bladder is smooth muscle bundles arranged in whichever way they have to be arranged to do their job of detrusing or squeezing out the urine, which is why it's also called the detruser muscle. Notice then we have some connective tissue out here. And notice that the top part of the bladder or the superior part is covered by serosa. So you may very likely find some mesothelial cells uh, along here, which you do. I can see some already. And um, all along here. Otherwise, the lower portions of the bladder kind of blend in with either the rectum or the uterus. And you're not likely to see any serosa in the inferior portions of the bladder. But certainly the dome and the um, much of the anterior and posterior surface is a true serosa. Here's an artery, here's a vein, here's smooth muscle bundles, here's connective tissue of the serosa or adventitia, here's a vein, here's an artery, here's some more connective tissue. Notice that you may very well have a hard time differentiating the spindly fibroblasts of the connective tissue from the spindly nuclei of the actual uh, uh, smooth muscle bundles of the detrusor muscle. Also, I hope, I can quickly zero in now on a classical transitional view of the epithelium itself. Epithelium of the entire urinary tract from the minor calyx through the major calyx, through the pelvis, through the ureter, through the bladder, and just about up to the urethra is transitional, which means it is stratified just like squamous is. and uh, the cells generally have a more columnar appearance at the base, and they have more of a cuboidal appearance at the surface. But if this muscle was, uh, bladder was significantly distended, then it would be very possible that these cuboidal looking cells would look very flat and squamoid when the bladder was distended. That's why it's called transitional. In real life, the entire epithelium I just described, or transitional lower urinary tract epithelium, is usually referred to, and now more often referred to, as urothelium. Notice we have connective tissue of the underlying uh, this mucosa, if you want to call this mucosa or lamina propria. I don't think it matters. Uh, I know that uh, it's called one thing or the other. I don't care what it's called. Notice that there's a lot of collagen bundles in here. Notice that very soon and quickly, uh, underneath this uh, submucosa, if you will, we have these little spindly bundles of smooth muscle, uh, which you can see along here, and which I'm going to try to blow up for you again. And they are classical smooth muscle bundles. Notice how they could be confused with the spindly fibroblasts of the intervening connective tissue. And I don't think we have anything else to say about bladder. Uh, except this is a very, very nice bladder. And it'll probably be like one of the very, very nicest ones you've ever seen. So why don't you just take a quick memory snapshot of it. And I thank you very much.